Hi, and welcome back. We're glad you're here. This week's episode is going to be a little bit different. Yes. We get asked all the time about how traveling affects our children. We have great positive comments and we have these gasps from people that we know. Well, what do you do about friends? What do you do about toys, education, what have you? And we felt like we have spoken uh, ad nauseum about these topics, but instead of sitting here talking to you today, we thought we would let our children speak for themselves and enlighten all of us, myself included. I yeah. haven't seen it. <laughs> I have not seen any of these. Right. We had a lot of fun with it. I enjoyed interviewing them. We got, Thank <laughs> you for the questions from viewers who want to know. I don't think I've ever heard you laugh so hard <laughs> when you were re-watching the video. We do this a lot of times, I say, for our kids. We think that it offers them quite a bit of um, a fresh perspective changing the paradigm of the uh, four walls and the typical way you do things. And we like to offer them alternatives. What they do with it, that remains to be seen. Right, so in one way it might look like this is a trip with parents dragging five kids across North America. Sometimes. <laughs> but in this episode you get to see how they really feel about it. And I found value in it and I hope you do too. This episode is all about the kids' interview. So, you ready for the first question? Yes. All right, first question is, what's it like sleeping in an RV versus the home that we moved out of? I'm my own room. I told myself when to clean my room. Now, I have a bed and a bathroom with cabinets. Um, before, I had a lot more personal space and personal storage, a lot more stuff that was like very useless, so, nice pillows to decorate the bed. It's definitely a decrease in personal space and personal storage. Helps you prioritize like what you want um, on a day-to-day -day basis. I pretty much go to the bathroom. <laughs> Good thing we have two bathrooms. Yeah, so <laughs> the, the, the back bathroom, which is not where all my stuff is, is where most people um, go if they need something. Because the front bathroom is Emily's. usually occupied by me. <laughs> That's Emily's <laughs> office. I usually I like draw in there sometimes, or I read sometimes. Talk <laughs> on the phone, <laughs> Marco. All right, Isaac. Thanks for joining me for the interview for this episode. Our viewers have questions. Perfect. We love questions. Yes, they want to know. Inquiring minds. The first question is, what's it like sleeping in an RV? that's different than sleeping in a hole? That's a very good question for me because I have one of the hardest times sleeping. I have the tiniest bed. Because they're bunks, but they're not they're, like traditional they're bunk bunks. bunk beds, yeah. yeah. Um, you, you can use them as like a closet. It's a closet slash, slash couch slash storage area. You can use them as bunk beds too. It's still different because it's kind of in an enclosed area. It's like a Tupperware container, you know? <laughs> It's a good way to describe You're it. You're sleeping in a tough work container. Because the roof is right there, the wall's right there. If it's all closed, then, you know, in a in a bedroom, you have, even if your bed's super tiny, like, you're sleeping in a cot, it's fine, because you have area around you. Okay. You can... So it's obviously a lot smaller than the house we had, yeah. we moved out of. We had a huge room, so much space. So that, that sounds like a downside. Is there a good side to it, or is it just a sacrifice? Good thing is, it's enclosed, it's your own yeah. area. No one can really. Right. It's kind of hard to fit multiple people in there. Right. You, know? you, <laughs> you know? have the you have the only room that no one else goes yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. You know, people will come in our room. People will go and sit on Kate's bed because they have to. But you have the only bed that's off limits. You and Eli. I also basically do all my school there. Spend free time there. It's. Um, okay. Good. About two or three times a day. I'm laying down to do school in my bed or something. When I lay up, I hit my head on the top of the roof. When I wake up, I'm like, Dum! <laughs> First question, Kate, how old are you? Seven. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's different for you? Like, where do you sleep in the RV? Somewhere around up there. Yeah. 
When it's time to go to sleep, what do you have to do? Um, can I make my... I have to make my bed differently. Yeah, it folds out. It's like... It has bad equipment on the inside. So when you slept in a house, you didn't sleep on a couch, right? So that's different. Yeah, that's a bad different. That's a bad different. <laughs> have you made any friends who you keep in touch with while traveling? I myself am not good at long distance friendship uh, or like remembering, oh, I should probably text them and see how they're doing. Or, so I have plenty of friends from St. Louis um, that I don't uh, keep up with as much as I'd like to. I keep ties with a girl from New Hampshire. I like, keep ties, I mean, I have her number. <laughs> I don't talk to a lot of people on a daily basis. Most people that I meet, I meet with the rest of my family. So I'll start with how we meet new friends. Basically, how you'd meet anyone in your, like a neighborhood, anyone in your neighborhood. Just riding your bike or skateboard or whatever. And you see someone playing with your little sister. Kate is very, very, hi, do you want to play? Hey, can we play? <laughs> Being in an R a different RV park and moving around doesn't mean it's that much different than a neighborhood. You still- It's not, you still see, an RV park is like a little a neighborhood. A neighborhood except with hundreds of houses instead of and they're constantly changing. Yeah. The main reason I start talking to people over email or whatever is because they're leaving and they, we want to keep in touch. Right. So, you know, they're here for a couple of days. Oh, we're gone. I, well, I got to go. So I'm, I don't, I'm not going to see you again. Let's keep in touch. So sometimes you make a friend and you only get to play for the weekend that they're here. And other times they're here for six months. Yeah. The next question is, have you made any friends on the road that you keep in touch with? I think mainly in New Hampshire because we were there. We were there in one spot for a long time. Here we're kind of moving about everywhere. Is the main way that you stay in touch by logging on and playing games? Is that the main? Uh, I think it's just like FaceTime or texting or. Okay. That is, you know, playing video games with people is the only way that you can keep keep in touch because that's nice because right. you don't get bored. Right. So what do you like to do with your friends that you meet on the road? Um, well, when they're, when you're in person, pretty much anything. Like we play board games, we go skateboarding, ride a bike, we just talk sometimes. Is there a difference between playing with friends in a neighborhood setting and in an RV park? It's, if it's in an actual neighborhood. Uh, the majority of kids are inside. It's right, it's been out here. And it's like a nice warm day or whatever. Everyone's outside because it's like there's not a lot of space inside. Right. So you know, you're kinda of forced to move outside at least once a day. And what do you like to do with them? It's like all the stuff that you would do with your normal friends, except you would do it you would do all that stuff in the beginning and not later. The Hatlers, which is Tim and Chris. Uh, we keep in touch with them, we keep in touch with the house. So I can't remember all the families that we keep in touch with, but those are a few. So you made a friend named Mary, and we met up with her a couple times. And you guys play games together, and you send videos to each other, and that's cool. And FaceTime. And play the, huh? Yeah, and FaceTime. And you get together and play in person too. Yeah, next question. What's the pros and cons of being with your siblings 24 seven? <laughs> okay, pros is it's very, uh, you get closer to them and you learn more about them and you learn um, what things not to push them on. Like if um, I like my personal space in the bathroom, then Isaac and Eli know not to like kick me out every five to 10 minutes because um, I don't have anywhere else to go. A pro would be getting to know your siblings more and learning their strengths and weaknesses and getting a more personal and mental bond with them and understanding them better in a lot of situations. You can see a con would be getting to know your siblings more and understanding them <laughs> uh, on a deeper, deeper mental level. You know what offends them and so you know how to get under their skin easier and they know how to get under your skin. I didn't know I could do that. You learn to concede more. Um, you you become closer with them so you can ask for favors um, more openly. Number one thing is bonding. 
you're kind of stuck together, so you're kind of forced to bond, or else everyone's gonna just like each other, 100%. So you kind of forced to bond and connect with your siblings more. You, um, in a house, you, there's been, there would be, be time periods where you're not gonna see people for whole days because they're in a different, they're in a different room. In an RV, it's always you're so close together. You're always talking. You're always laughing. You know. <laughs> Cheekbone. <laughs> smile. 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 Open. Open. <laughs> That's the good side. That's What's the top the... pro? Um, con is negative energy spreads like lightning. You can just feel it. So if someone says something mean. Someone's in low mood. Everyone's in low mood. It's hard to kind of stay away from that. I mean, if you go outside, yeah, go outside and play, come back inside, it's just... Gotcha. It spreads very quickly. But the, I guess the positive side of that is if people are in a good mood, that yeah. spreads fast too. The pros are like you get to know them better even though you know a lot of them, you, a lot about them, you can like, it's like they don't have a space. You get to, you like, play with them and interact with them and laugh with them the whole entire day. Biggest con would be, and so the biggest pro is you're always together, and the biggest con is you're always together. <laughs> it's the same thing. So sometimes you really want to be with each other and you want to play, and oh, this is fun, and then other times you just want your privacy and your space and you can't really get it unless you're somewhere else. I'm gonna start with the good part because it's the easiest to explain. I'm really happy that me and Emily sleep inside of a kitchen. It's that like the girls room. Yeah, kind of. The bad part is since I don't have my own room, I I don't feel good because I like to have my own personal space and have lots of toys to be able to play with. Where is your favorite place that we have been? Oh, on our whole adventure. Um, Utah was really pretty. It was hot, but it was really pretty. I really enjoyed it. Niagara Falls was a fun experience. It was one of the first places we went, and it was uh, pretty amazing for me to try to wrap my mind around how this is how we're living now and we get to see like big monuments that like people talk about in movies and in tv shows and in like the newspaper and it go, people go crazy for it a lot of times the favorite places are um random places where we share uh little moments that make this adventure worth it where you learn something about other people or like get to see them smile like a real big genuine smile so i really like that harvest host okay farm the first harvest host. The second one was pretty cool too, but I like the first one. So I'll put links to those harvest host episodes here. But harvest host is basically families that own businesses that open them up for people with RVs to come in and stay on their property. And if they have kids, then it's awesome. It's a party. Brady, Brady is a nine year old, and he drove me around on a track. If you mean favorite place by like favorite place, like museums and ships and boats and submarines and all these different things that we've gone to see, then I really can't tell you because there's so many amazing things that we've done, like the canyons are one of the best things, the mountains, the hikes, it's just all equally absolutely amazing. But if you mean like campsite or places we've stayed, then I would say that the one in New Hampshire, what was that called? Tidewater. Tidewater was definitely one of the best uh, campgrounds that I've ever been to. Because, well, for a couple of reasons, because there's a lot of space. We are, it was our RV and then a big grass field right in front of it. That was really fun. You know that big trampoline thing and the boat that we went to on the same day? Mm -hmm. That's probably my favorite memory since. Oh, when we went whale watching and then got off the boat and then jumped on the trampoline? Yeah. Okay. Do you miss living in the house? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes I miss having my own personal space. Other times, no. It's a lot easier to access everything. It really depends on your mood. Um, so if I'm in a good mood and just happy with where I am in life right now, then I don't really miss a house. But sometimes you can miss, like, saying hey can i have friends over or um 
could I have a sleepover or we're having a party, then I think, well, look what I have now. I'm closer with my siblings than I've ever been before. And I understand them and my parents more than I ever would have in a house. Where the devil? I don't know where, where the devil is the tea gone? Well, good sir, I'm afraid it What do you miss most about living in a brick and mortar house? I miss my bedroom, because I don't have a bedroom. Having our own backyard and front yard, whatever. When you're in an RV, everything's kind of your backyard, but to have your own area, that's, right. it's, it's still pretty awesome. And another thing is space to run around it, like space to run around in inside. If it's cold or raining or snowing or dark, or you don't want to go outside, you want to have space to run around. A lot more room not having to like struggle when, 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 when we're moving, just having the relief of not knowing that, oh, in two months, we're not gonna go to five states away or somewhere that we don't even know yet. Uh, all that stress is off. And of course the top number one, and it has been since the very first day we left is the friends. Cause you can't get too focused on friends. You have to be able to let go for a while and then come back and then let go and then come back. So okay. it's definitely friends is the top. More I love the most. Um, getting to travel the world and instead of, like we said, instead of seeing it on a bunch of skates in your life, that's definitely okay. top number. And then what do you miss the most? Uh, a lot more room. Considering what you have to sacrifice, is it worth it? Yes. There are times when it feels like it's not worth it, but those are really just the times that I'm forgetting everything I've gained because of this adventure. I've gained a much deeper understanding of myself um, and of my family. So it's changed me, but for the better. And I appreciate that. Uh, and I definitely don't regret going this adventure. If you asked me when we have, were thinking about this, I would have said, no, I don't want to go on this adventure. I don't want to leave home. I don't want to leave home. We, I finally feel like I belong uh, in the world and now we're leaving it and we're going away from everything that I've ever known. So it was, um, at that time, I didn't want to go. Now, I would just tell myself, just relax. You're gonna cry so much and miss everything you have. So just soak up everything now instead of being sad about it. All right, so last question is this. Based on what you have to give up, is it worth it? Absolutely, yes. Yes. I think so. It's pretty, it's pretty awful. Awesome. I mean, it's November. It's November. November. <laughs> it is November. And we're sitting outside in shorts. And, yeah. We have shorts. I mean, it's pretty chilly right now. Palm trees. It's like 60, 70 degrees right now. You get to go to places that you never would have thought you'd go to when you're traveling. You find out things that you didn't know even existed. You're like, that's a thing. Right. You get to Niagara Falls or whatever, and you're actually there. It's not. It's different from just seeing photos and stuff. You're there, you get to live it, you get to tell stories. It's like a big storybook. Good way to put it. Big movie, you live in a movie. <laughs> awesome. It's pretty much worth it because there's a lot of experiences, but there still is a lot you give up in that time. So, so you're saying you might have an idea of some of the sacrifices you'd have to make going into it, but then when you get into it, you realize it's those and more yeah. that you didn't even know existed. But yes, overall, it is worth it. It's worth it. Okay. If we had to do it over again, would you sign up to do it, or would you say, "Count me out"? Count me out. You'd say, count me out. <laughs> what is the hardest you have laughed while being on the RV? And what made you laugh so loud? When we were like at that parking lot campsite, remember that? Mm -hmm. When we were ni right next to an airport, uh, you took me on a bike ride to ice cream and we were going down this huge hill and that it was so fast, my eyes started to water. Was that a fun day though? Yeah, it was a really fun day.
Because mm -hmm. we had breakfast, or we had lunch on the beach, didn't we? Yeah. That was awesome, huh? Well, that was a fun day for me too. Mm -hmm. That's a good memory. Kate and I just rode a couple miles down from Doc Wilder to Manhattan Beach. Really nice bike trail. We've got a little outdoor cafe here. It's huge. Waffle cones. We've got all kinds of um, equipment to rent here. <laughs> beach is clean. Swing sets on the beach. I think we'll probably make it down here more than once. I went with tuna melt with jalapenos and a pina colada smoothie. Let me hear that ice cream bell. Oh yeah, I'll take an ice cream. <laughs> ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> <laughs> you laughed the hardest during the table time. <laughs> Don't cut this part out. <laughs> Mercy, can I ask you a question? What? What is your favorite thing about living on an RV? Scooting. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode of Swift Family Ropes and Expedition. We hope you enjoyed and we hope you come back next week. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any more questions because we love the questions. Questions are so fun to answer. We'll see you next week. Bye. In Southern California. Hi. Huh? It's where the people came We can't have a hole in your knee for the video. You should do this the whole time. <laughs> no. You gotta change. You gotta throw those away. It's a chair though. Yeah, no, no. Don't try not to. Oh god. You went all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> we need a new love seat chair. <laughs> it's making the beat. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit like this for the rest. <laughs> I guess we need a location change. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> By the way, um, I I didn't rip this just now. This was from the very beginning. <laughs> I ripped it before we started filming. I was just like... <laughs> I thought you had to go to the bathroom this whole time. I didn't realize you are trying to <laughs> stay above the chair line. Alright, well, <laughs> let's go. Uh, we'll switch locations. Yeah. <laughs> My gosh. The tiny rip that you made, and I'm so glad of you, and destroyed it. Alright. I just like being at home with a big area and seeing my friends almost every week. That's what we, we used to have a party with Felicity and Lucy like every week because you, you and mom were so rich. <laughs> uh, okay.